Everyone get out! Hello tankers and tankettes, welcome to Q&D number 3, now with exactly the same amount of face cam as the previous one! Yay! I had a lot of comments in the last one about my hair, because... Just be I don't know, because I have the username pointy hair, shall I? People assume I have pointy hair, and then they were therefore terribly disappointed when that turned out not to be true. A couple of people of of wow, that's totally the wrong side. Have um, suggested that pony hair Jedi might be more appropriate because it's kind of long right now. I actually could do with getting it a trim. Usually I have it kind of like that sort of length, but it's now you know it's been months since I've been to the hairdresser. So. Yeah, I don't normally have it quite this long. It's just I'm lazy. But um, some people have suggested that pony hair Jedi is is more appropriate. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I'm going to stick with pointy hair Jedi because, damn it, it's always been pointy hair Jedi. And you know, regardless of the state of my actual hair, I quite like that username. I've used it for quite a long time. Anyway, also, also, other people mentioned curtains and well, actually not in the comments, but people just generally have mentioned curtains and curtains. You guys, curtains. I have curtains. I'm so rich. Um. Yeah, it's actually like the middle of the day when I'm recording this, but I've got the curtains closed because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see me. I'd be totally dark because all the light would be coming through the window and, and you know, there'd be like a halo around my head, which would be very, very not right at all because I'm not at all secretly evil or anything like that. No, no. Where would you get that idea? Anyway, on to the questions. And there's not that many. I'm hoping to do this in about 25 minutes-ish. We'll see if that prediction holds true at the end of the video. Behemoth NL asks, question to the caption guy. Hmm. When will we reveal our plans for world domination ruled by sarcasm? W world domination. Hmm. I'm going to have to look into this, Behemoth. I'm going to be watching you very carefully from now on, because clearly, you know... Yeah, that, that's you and Caption Guy together. That sounds like a dangerous combination, you know. And you might threaten my own world domination plans. Not that I have any, because not evil, remember? Totally not evil, you guys. Wink. Terry Balfour asks, What would drive me mad enough to end up swearing like jingles? <laughs> I'm not sure I could ever be quite that mad, to be honest. Plus, he did have 20 years in the Navy, so he's got that experience to draw on. I think the main reason anyone joins the Navy is to learn how to swear like a sailor. There's probably other reasons as well, but... I think mainly it's the swearing. But, um, yeah, I, I don't have that experience, and I don't also think I could ever just get that mad at a computer game, or maybe even other people generally, that I would swear like jingles. Although, I think he does it more for the comedy effect than the actual, you know, but uh, I, I think also he does mean it. You know, I think he does get that annoyed. I can see why sometimes, but still, I'm... I don't know, maybe I just have a different disposition. Because we're all individuals, and precious snowflakes, and etc, etc. Terry also asks, are your eyebrows real? Unfortunately, yes. Yes, really quite real. I know I look like a Jerry Anderson puppet with these things, but unfortunately they are, in fact, entirely not fake. Starla Starheim asks, and I hope I said that right, can I grow a beard? Well, in theory, yes, I can. Uh, it's just... A chin-only beard might look okay, or maybe kind of like, you know, around the mouth, but if I was to do the full, you know... I get a weird growth pattern in that I don't really get any growth on my cheeks at all. It's it's all on the neck, so I'd look like like Nero or Lincoln, except not cool. Um, so I, I'm not convinced the neck beard is a good look. I don't think I'll ever be doing that. In fact, I don't think I'll ever get face fuzz full stop. I just, I don't know, I don't like beards especially. Um, wow, Sircon is going to, let's hope he never sees this, or Fosh, or Versi, or anyone with a beard at all, ever. Wow, I've just alienated so much of my audience. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm personally, uh, I'm not saying beards are a bad thing. Backpedal faster, backpedal faster. But uh, I, I don't. I don't think I would like how I would look with a beard, and I don't know, some people, sometimes people have suggested this, but no, no, no beards. Um, Rav, Razvi, I can say it, I can say it, you guys, Razvi Altian asks, have I played any of the Command and Conquer series, and which ones in particular? Basically everything up to um, Generals, and I don't think I've played any of the more recent ones, I haven't played, like there's the free online one, I haven't played that. But I've got a, a DVD box set that's um, basically everything up to generals on one box set, all the expansions. I've also actually played the uh, there's like open source remakes of um, not just Red Alert, not just uh, Command and Conquer or Tiberian Dawn, as it's you know 
officially known these days. Um, but there's actually also Dune 2000 in there as well. And man, I love Dune 2000. That was a great game. Um, the the favourite one of all of them is probably Red Alert 2. Uh, but Tiberian Sun was a lot of fun. I think the original Crown and Conquer was quite a lot of fun. I actually played that on the PlayStation, if you can believe. That's going back a little ways. But uh, yeah, they're a they're a great set of games. And the the Westwood ones, you know, they really stand out. Generals was still quite good, but it was pretty generic. It wasn't really. It, it didn't feel Command and Conquer really very much. It just had their Command and Conquer name on it. Um, but yeah, they're a good series of games. I've liked them, and uh, I've probably sunk a good few hours in over the years. Um, excuse me, I'll have a quick drink of water. Or I could pretend it's gin, but you know, I, I think everyone's going to dis uh, be disappointed it's not whiskey. PPP, 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 PPPJ, or maybe just PPJ, asks, well, there's a there's a bit of a stutter thing that I wish I hadn't got. Why did it have to be a P? Why? Why? Let's hope this clip never gets taken out of context. He asks, I, he, I saw a video of yours that, with piglets in it. Am I a farmer? No, is the quick que uh, answer to that. Um, that was a video from a good few years ago now. I say good few. It must be like four or five years. But um, that's from my parents' place when they still had pigs because they've basically got a like a, a farm small holding. One in Scotland just called a croft and that's actually got a particular set of laws and history that goes with crofting. But um, they, actually, they actually live on one. They uh, brought up pigs for a while. Um, apologies to any vegetarians, but they brought them up for... Uh, basically, they would um, they would get a litter. They, they, they did artificial insemination. It's very... Uh, you send off um, for basically pig sperm through the post, and they uh, give you like a, uh, an inseminator thing. It, it's like a, a turkey basted with a twisty bit on the end. And I, I never was involved with that particular gruesome detail myself, but, you know, it, it's not hard to imagine. And... I really don't want to imagine, but oh boy, is it not hard to. Um, but four months later, you get a whole bunch of piglets come out, and it's actually quite... You know, I've seen pigs giving birth, and it's just like pop, 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 just like this row of piglets coming out. It's actually quite funny. Um, but they were basically, yeah, they get sold to people to fatten up and then go off to the slaughterhouse, and we kept a few of us for ourselves to be fattened up and go off to the slaughterhouse. But oh boy, were they tasty. I mean, oh boy, free-range pork. Oh, those were some good pigs. And they had a pretty nice time of it before they actually, you know, before the inevitable happened, or uh, as we like to, to diplomatically put it around the children, if ever there were children visiting. Because, you know, it's funny, you have a bunch of cute piglets running around and suddenly all your family, friends, children come, you know, for a visit, for some reason. Um, but yeah, they, they, they go off to the nice farm in Harris, where they live full and happy lives. So, uh, any, any vegetarians watching, actually, that, that's what happened. They they went to a nice farm in Harris, and we in no way ate them. And they were in no way delicious. Moving on! Now I've alienated everybody who, you know, <laughs> all the vegetarians. Julian Zhu, or possibly Zhu, I'm not sure, asks, uh, How old am I? I'm actually 28, and... I don't know if I look 28, I've been told I don't, I've been told I, I certainly don't sound 28. Uh, but yeah, that's how old I am. Uh, I actually had my birthday only last month, in February. And it was the case that up until about three years ago, I still had to definitely have an ID with me if I was ever planning to buy alcohol. I've gotten away with it once or twice since, but I don't actually buy alcohol that often, so I like the occasional bottle of whiskey. Um, I've probably bought people alcohol as a present or whatever more often than I have for myself. But yeah, uh, it's, it's, um, it's the case that even these days I'd probably still have an ID on me just in case. <laughs> Ferdinand Porsche asks, have I got a driver's license and did getting it and a car go smoothly? If not, then why not? Well, this is going to have a way longer answer than anybody might think. So, let me take another drink before I start, because this is going to be a lot of talking. Aren't you so glad I don't edit these and just do them all in one take? Yeah, I'm just so professional, you guys. So professional. So, the reason why I don't drive is twofold. The first reason is money. That's quite easy to understand. You know, many of you know I'm not currently employed, still looking for work, hoping to make this YouTube thing, YouTube even, 
pay enough to actually uh, make a living from, which would be awfully nice. But um, cars are expensive, you guys. I don't know if you've noticed, but all the drivers are currently going, yes, they're all not nodding fervently, yes. Cars are quite expensive. They are a money pit second only to children, from what I understand. So I've never been able to afford, you know, uh, uh, buying a car, being able to run a car, totally out of the question. Even driving lessons currently outside of my um, uh, financial ability, because they're not especially cheap. I know you can go a certain way with, you, you know, you can get yourself so far with kind of just reading up stuff and uh, friends and family helping out, but uh, at some point you need a professional instructor and um, those costs. The other reason, and this is the involved bit, is actually, um, it requires some explanation and it actually is pertinent to World of Tanks and video games and other things as well. So, uh, I am actually on the autistic spectrum. I have Asperger's syndrome, and I've mentioned this once or twice on the stream, but it's not like I introduce my every video by going, Hi, I have Asperger's syndrome, because it's not, you know, a thing that I do, and it would be slightly odd if I did do that. But it, it is the fact, I was actually only diagnosed with that, um, let's see, five or six years ago? It's relatively late, because most people it gets caught in when they're like primary school, so when you sort of hit a certain developmental level and, and it's the thing they look for in schools basically and somehow I slipped through the net and it wasn't really until um, I started, there were a couple of things that happened in my own life when I suddenly started to wonder and think, hmm, okay, maybe I'm not quite normal. Shush, caption guy, just, just, did, did you have to, caption guy, did you have to? Yeah, of course you did. Anyway, <laughs> but, um, what Asperger's is, and uh, I, I'm sure it's a tremendous shock, you know, nerdy guy who likes science fiction and video games on YouTube with Asperger's. Stop the presses, you guys. That's totally unprecedented. Um, but the reason it's pertinent is because uh, Asperger's, uh, it's not like it's uh, um, a disease. It, it's hard to describe uh, exactly um, the, the official title of it is it's a pervasive developmental disorder and it's basically a thing that affects lots of other things that go on inside the brain and um, there are certain traits that are associated with it and that's actually how they diagnose it they go you know have you got this trait have you got that rate uh, trait and uh, that this literally almost a checklist and if you meet a certain number of criteria they go okay yes you've got Asperger's um, but what it means is these are all kind of like traits, characteristics, characteristics even of of myself that all add up to Asperger's. So it's kind of hard to separate and go, oh yeah, that one particular thing, that's Asperger's. It doesn't quite work like that. It's more the kind of general grouping of these characteristics that form together. And then it's like you've got a cake that's autistic. It's an autistic cake or something. This is such a coherent explanation right now. But hey, one of the things is communication, by the way. <laughs> Maybe unsurprisingly to anyone at all, but another thing that I have particular difficulty is, which is kind of associated with Asperger's, is information processing, and it's when you have a lot of information coming at you all at once, and processing that information, and then making correct decisions based on that information, and that's basically when you're driving along in your car, and you're whizzling or whizzing along at 40 miles an hour, and you've got to be constantly making decisions on, hey look, there's a cyclist, hit the brakes! I don't think I'd be very good at that, and I know I'm not particularly good at that in other areas. So, when it's a matter of life and death, literally, you know... Um, oh no, there's a bus full of orphans! Oh no, I hit them, and they're all dead, and I'm dead. Um, okay, maybe that's a slightly silly example, but you get the gist. There's no safe points in real life, unfortunately. You can't hit the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the the undo button. Um, so I generally feel I'm safer not behind the wheel of a car. I let other people driving. I take the bus a lot. I even walk a lot. So uh, it, it, it's the, the case that even though I'm somewhere fairly rural, I can actually get away with it because there's actually a fairly good bus service in the Western Isles, considering it's a fairly rural place compared to a lot of places that have like one bus a week. Uh, we actually do pretty well here. So that that's kind of like the the complicated reason why I don't. Also the money thing, but the way this also has a knock-on effect with games is uh, games that require a lot of um, fast information processing, I'm talking like Twitch shooters like Call of Duty, even things like Battlefield 4, you know, um, or the Battlefield ger uh, series generally, which I've played a bit of. Um, Team Fortress 2 is another one, even things like um, RPG games, you know, uh, MMORPGs. 
where you've got sometimes in some situations a lot of information coming at you very quickly. I'm not very good at that. You know, I have BF4. It came with my graphics card, in fact, and I've played it a bit. I I've not played it very much because um, the same with T Team Fortress 2. You know, I dip in and occasionally I think, oh, I'd like to play that for you know maybe an hour, and then I go away and do something else completely because I find it really exhausting and I find it quite difficult because it's just a lot of information and it's like, oh no, suddenly there's a guy in front of you and too late, you're dead. And okay, it doesn't matter so much in a video game, but after more than an hour of that I just like, not only does it get a bit tiring, but it's also, it's not especially fun after a while, you know, if you die over and over again. So yeah, it's why I like World of Tanks as well, because it has a much slower pace. But even in World of Tanks, sometimes I, it gets a bit too hectic and I kind of choke up a bit and um, I, I, I flub an important shot. You, sometimes they come and my video, oh, OMG, Jenny, I really, you really suck at aiming. And sometimes I do really suck at aiming because there's too much else going on that I'm trying to uh, process. And then like my aiming skills suffer and it's like even in World of Tanks it's noticeable. So... Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to be a bit, you know, a, a professional Counter-Strike player kind of thing. <laughs> Even if I wasn't a bit too old for it, and these things do require, you know, 13-year-old reflexes for the most part. Even then, my pro my ability to actually correctly process the information and not die repeatedly and just be a drag on any team I'm on, they kind of suck. So, uh, yeah, I'm... I'm not good at that. That's a, that's a reason why I don't play those kind of games as well. A reason why I like games like EU4 and Theme Hospital and Transport Tycoon and you know these kind of management games that are all at a much slower pace where you can even pause things or turn-based games, you know, when you've got a, a lot more time to sit and think about what's going on, basically, which you don't especially do in a fast-paced game. So there's the answer that nobody was expecting. So there you go. We'll move on. Mr. Jupsy asks, being a, a big Stargate fan myself, who do I prefer? Oh dear, oh dear. Lunch trying to repeat on me there, that's not good. Jack O'Neill or John Shepard? Well, it's got to be O'Neill, I mean, come on. Admittedly, I've only seen the first series of Atlantis, I thought it was okay, but um, it's got to be Jack, I mean, it's got to be. It's just, how can it be anyone else than Jack O'Neill? He's just, uh, Richard Dean Anderson's just fantastic. Connor Woolrich asks, do I think Wargaming should implement amphibious tanks? I actually don't think that would work very well. You'd need special mechanisms for not very many tanks. I can't see that they would especially uh, massively change the gameplay at all. Um, a lot of the time they'd just be kind of useless. You know, there's a lot of maps that don't have water. There's other maps where you'd be out on the water and by the time you were halfway to get somewhere, then it wouldn't matter. You'd be spotted. You'd be literally dead in the water because you've got no cover. You're just sat there on the water and everyone can shoot at you. And That's not going to work. I don't think they're ever going to appear and I don't think it would be a good idea if they did appear. But like I said, I don't think they ever will appear. So let's... Yeah. Maybe maybe you're in the minority that thinks it would be cool. I, I You know, on one level, maybe it would be, but I don't think it would work. So there you go. Capital Roach asks, when is Caption Guy going to get his own face cam? Really? I, I, is this is this beautiful visage not enough for you? I just... I mean, is, is it not enough that he's in every damn video already and now you want more of him? I mean, oh, just, just screw you guys. Screw you guys so much. Not really, though. Please keep watching. Please don't unsubscribe. Um... Yeah, I don't think Capturing Guy will ever get his own face cam because I, I, I think there's probably more than enough Capturing Guy in my videos already. Too much, if you ask me, but doubtless he'd say something different. Doubtless he has said something different. <sighs> anyway, Joshua Brown asks, if I was to recommend a tank tree, or a, a whole line, that uh, I would go for for every tank and not just one or two tanks as a highlight, which one would it be? The IS-4 line, because... From the KV-1 right up to the IS-4, they are all fun tanks, at least to me. And, you know, I like my well-armoured heavy tanks, and they are all good tanks in their own way. Um, there, there's some good tanks on the other line, you know, the the IS-7 line, um, but the T-910 on the IS-7 line are a bit less well-regarded these days. I 
yeah, the IS-8 in the right hands can be okay. I'm not massively enjoying it myself, but it's okay. But um, I just thinking of all the tank lines I've played, now I would have to say the IS-4 line, because they're all good. And it wasn't like I was massively grinding for the IS-4. It was actually that I was uh, just playing them as they came through. And I was kind of grinding for the, the KV-4 was a goal. But after that point, it was just like, oh, I'll just keep playing these tanks because I like them. And hey, I've unlocked the next one. And oh, I've got the STI. And oh, I've got the IS-4. You know, very nice. So that, that's how I ended up with the IS-4 as my first tank. It was just because I enjoyed that line and liked playing that line. It didn't feel like a grind. Whereas um, something like the mouse, for instance, I actually specifically went on a grind for the mouse. Although I had the Tiger P and the, the VK for a while. So most of my grinds have been pretty slow, actually. I very rarely go for a specific tank. Uh, and even the mouse grind, it was really more um, one side unlocked from the VK45A and got to the VK45B. At that point, I actually started to grind the mouse. And it wasn't like I had been really going for it up to that point so um yeah but but for lines that are just fun to play and you just unlock the next tank and maybe you can keep the tanks you've been playing i'd say the is4 it's, it's a good line joshua brown asks um no i just uh, uh well i'm being so i'm paying so much attention here's another tank related one from <laughs> HSM English. I'm getting confused about the order my questions are in because reading is hard, you guys. It's so hard. Uh, what tank lines in World of Tanks am I grinding next? Well, I've got a couple on the go at the moment. The E50M line, where I'm up to tier 8. The, uh, the Fosh 155 line, where again, up to tier 8. Uh, IS-7, I'm kind of slowly getting towards that with the, with the IS-8. Um, but these are, like I've just said with my previous answer, I don't really like go on mega grinds for things. I just tend to play through, and there's been very few tanks where I've actually, like, even making the effort to get a daily every single day. I really hardly do that with any tanks, but um, there, there have been a handful of occasions where I, where I have. But for the most part, I just like, oh, I feel like playing this tank today, and you know, then I go and play the Panther 2, and I get the daily for that, and maybe three days later, oh feel like playing Panther 2 again. So I, I th that's why it took me so long to get to my first tier 10, was that I don't especially go on massive grounds like that, I just kind of take the game as it comes, trying to enjoy myself along the way. So, um, yeah, uh, next question is Mo Guywell, who asks, a tough one, say I had to marry a tank because for some reason I needed to, and you know, obvi obviously that's a, a scenario I can well imagine happening. Um, yeah, the AMX-40, the KV-4 and the mouse are already married, so which tank do I pick? Can't I just have an affair with, you know, I know they're married, but can't I just have an affair? No? Oh, okay. Um, I guess the Cruiser 4, because it's, it's a fun tank. It's one of my most played low-tier tanks. Uh, it's just, whenever I'm having a bad day on my other tanks, I go, okay. I'm going to go play the Cruiser 4, and sometimes I have bad battles in that as well, but generally it's fun along the way, and whatever tiering I'm in against, you know, if I'm in a tier 5 battle, then that's a different kind of battle than tier 3 battle, you know, a tier 3 battle I can just go stomp, 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 and, you know, norm everyone else's, else's HP, uh, whereas in a tier 5 battle, I can be super troll and sneak up behind KB1s and set them on fire with gold shells and, you know, whatever, but um, it, it's just fun, and, you know, uh, I, I imagine we could have many happy days together, though I'll, I, I'd have to be careful because I'd always be secretly throwing longing glances at the mouse and the Kivy 4 and the AMX 40. Yeah, and, and wishing that you could marry several tanks at once in this hypothetical situation, because I totally would. I'd need a big house, though, I think, maybe. Robert Charlson asks, Hey PHJ, who makes my last Supper 12 list? Basically, me and any 12 people living or dead, and we all have a big dinner. Now, I did try to think of a serious answer to this, and I actually couldn't. I came up with about two or three names at most, and then I just hit a wall. And so I'm going to go with Richard Dawkins and 11 Popes. And, you know, there are some real doozies in there on the Pope side of things. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, hard to say exactly which Popes, but I think that could be funny. I, I think I would like to watch that. Um... Maybe I would keep away any sharp objects from that particular dinner table, though, just to be on the safe side. And here we go. Last question, you guys. 
We're there! You've made it through another video of me talking and derping. What do I think I would enjoy uh, World of Tanks style arcade battles more? Or uh, Well, this is not exact. Maybe I should read out the exact question. I'm trying to paraphrase here, but uh, the question is not the best worded. But here we go. Sturb Mensch asks... Do I think I'd enjoy World of, uh, uh, War Thunder more than World of Tanks, since War Thunder is what almost all of us thought what is when we first started playing it? Well, slightly awkward question uh, structure aside, actually having played the Grand Forces beta, I would say that um, I'm not going to be one of those people that go, OMG, what is dead, and rush off to, you know, um, to play War Thunder. I think War Thunder I can see playing on a regular basis, but nowhere near as regular as, as World of Tanks. It's just a completely different game, and it's definitely going to be less accessible for a lot of people. There's going to be some crossover, a lot of people are going to play both, but I don't think War Thunder is going to be nearly as popular. And I actually discuss it a bit more in my um, my most recent War Thunder video. I should do another one of those soon, actually. But uh, I, I discuss some of the differences, or well, I, I talk about it along the way while I'm playing, and you know the reason why it feels so different. So. I don't think it's it's uh, certainly not a World of Tanks killer, but I don't think there is such a thing as a World of Tanks killer. However, if you've been paying attention to to uh, for the record, you'll know that there is actually um, now what is it called? Armored Warfare, something like that. There's basically been another tank game that's been announced by a company called Obsidian Software, who are uh, it, it's a modern setting. It's going to be modern tanks. I'm going to guess kind of like from the late uh, late eighties to the present day. I almost said lateies there. The, the lateies to the present date, that made sense. And uh, that looks like it might be interesting. I've actually gone and typed my email into the, you know, sign up for beta thing, so we'll see if anything comes of that. Uh, I might even uh, bug my network, see if they can get some beta codes for that. Although, it's probably one of these things where, you know, even if I get in the beta, I'm not going to be able to talk about it until it goes to, um, you know, there's usually a... a, a, a a clause or a you know a, a thing you can't talk about it show footage up to it, uh, about it up to a certain point and then they you know they they lift the what's the name of that thing the thing the uh, the thing they call the thing when it's a thing like that um wow well done there brain well done but you know the thing I mean because I don't apparently. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for this Q&D. If you've got a question for the next one, or you just want to say how derpy I am, you can put it in the comments below. Um, if you do have a question, make sure you put question at the front so I can see clearly who's asking a question and who's just making a comment about stuff. You can hit the like button, uh, or the dislike button at the lack of, you know, pointy hair, because many people seem disappointed by that. I I'm sorry guys, it's just, it's not pointy, it's just not, sorry. You can subscribe to my channel, you can check out my Facebook page, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.